Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. My name is Jeff and this is uh, Off the Grid Iron. This is my channel dedicated to all things bushcraft, DIY, camping survival, and many of those outdoor adventure type uh, initiatives. Uh, in today's episode, I want to share with you, and uh, it's my first time, in making a do-it-yourself waterproofing that is some pretty common materials found in local hardware stores and grocery stores. I just re, uh, refurbished a canoe pack, a woods canoe pack in canvas, and I have a couple other canvas packs sitting around that I thought if I could nail this waterproofing, uh, it would be a perfect way to uh, extend the life of these packs and protect the canvas. Stick around, let's see how I do. Hi guys, welcome back. Jeff Allen off the Green Iron. Just a very few items that you're going to need. Uh, the biggest and one of the most important is some element of wax. Now I have these uh, granulated refined wax, uh, peril racks that you can use for canning or candle making, any number of other uh, projects. But that's my, my granule or wax that we're going to melt down. I also have some boiled linseed oil. It does In many of the recipes it does require you to use a small percentage of that. And lastly, I have a little bit of, and this is a bit of a, an experiment, a little bit of a kind of a Varsol paint thinner uh, type uh, solution. However, one of the things that's different about this one is I've actually used it prior on some staining, some wood staining. So there is some uh, kind of a darkened uh, minwax um, <clears throat> kind of colored tones to it. So it might darken my uh, my bags, but that's quite okay. So let's get started. So what I've done is turned on the, the hot plate here. That's warming up our water. This is an old uh, juice can and that will serve as uh, kind of our double boiler setup. In this can, I will combine all our ingredients, our wax, this is called peril wax, and it's all granular. You can see it's all little beads of wax. This will melt very quickly, I would think. Uh, a little faster than the block wax. Uh, the other option is you could use beeswax of a herd. So we're going to dump all this in. You may be wondering why I'm using a double boiler system. Uh, wax is flammable and actually it has uh, many different purposes from preserving to waxing skis, candle making and so on. But right in the caution, you can see down below, do not melt wax over direct heat. Wax is flammable and should only be heated in a double boiler over low heat. So we've got the heat turned up right now just to get it started. But uh, once it's going, we're going to turn down the, the, the temperature and just leave it at a low heat to keep those uh, keep the wax melting and fluid and from there we'll be able to use it and brush it and apply it to our pack. While we're waiting, uh, in terms of measurements, I'm using two cups of the peril wax granules and I believe uh, we're going to use these standard measures. This is a, a tuna or kind of a salmon can uh, of boiled linseed oil. And this is one of the fancy faced cat tins or one of the smaller tuna cans from the store. And that is going to be our mix of, um, of, of stain, but primarily uh, Varsol paint thinner. So we're going to give that a try for ratios and see how it comes out. Just as we're waiting for the wax to finish melting, here are a couple of projects that I hope to uh, waterproof. This is the Canadian Forces 82 uh, ruck sack, ruck bag. Uh, maybe 
I'm not referring to it as the exact make and model, but I know my uh, my friend at Tal Shadrach at Oshawa Bushcraft is an expert, uh, and it's a Canadian, certainly Canadian 82 model uh, with uh, a few modifications to it. We probably will be giving that a coat of wax as well, make sure it's waterproof. Another uh, pack that I'm carrying is this big, this pack here, three liter. Um, it looks like, I don't know, a lot of packs out there look like this one. If you recognize it, please tell me what it, what it is in the comments below. And there's no markings on it, uh, no markings, Frost River, anything like that. Padded uh, leather shoulder straps and quick release shoulder strap on this one side. Kind of a <coughs> Tom Roycroft uh, frame, metal frame. And it's all curved for the lower back with uh, kind of a lumbar support strap. Uh, that's a great pack. Uh, I hope to uh, waterproof that one and, and use that one in some of my uh, coming outings. And uh, this one up here, this is the woods bag I was mentioning. Uh, replaced all the straps on it, and it's a one big pouch in the middle. Uh, this was uh, kind of a canoe pack design made by SE Woods. I replaced all the leather strapping and buckles and really tried my hand at some of the leather work. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. One of the modifications I did to the bottom, the bottom had a number of little holes in it, and it was wearing, uh, wearing a little thin. So I stitched on a additional piece of leather on the bottom, riveted in the corners. That's a little quick snap there. Stitched it across from the outside. This on the end, I've left it open. And what I like about this is not only is it going to protect the bottom of my pack, but I can reach back and pull out my silky saw out of the bottom. So I don't have to worry about carrying it on the side. This is just reinforcing the bottom and actually gives some uh, lumbar support by having that saw in there, that rigidity. So I'll reach back and I can pull that saw out right into the bottom of my pack. So this is one that's going to uh, hopefully receive some of this waterproofing and, uh, and uh, that will just extend the life and durability of it. We're going to try this uh, concoction on some smaller projects. I've got a haversack, uh, an old military haversack that I might try, and some other just natural canvas bags. I feel that it should work, so uh, we'll give that a try uh, to start. Okay, that's just going to dance around and do its thing. We've turned down the temperature uh, just uh, to keep it on warm, and uh, all the wax is melted. I've got about two cups of wax uh, melted in there right now. And what we're going to do is uh, uh, we're going to add our boiled linseed oil. All right, and give that a good stir. It's about the consistency right now of uh, kind of a thin maple syrup, a little bit of a corn syrup consistency. Uh, so it looks like it's uh, just just about right. And now we're going to add a little bit of the, um, kind of, this is the paint thinner. Uh, whoops, just turned it up a little too high there. So we're going to add the paint thinner now. This is a fantastic feast can about the volume. And the, the dark coloring is just the rinsing off from, uh, from a paintbrush that I was using to do some wood staining. And that'll just add a little bit of dark color to my, uh, my mixture. All right, this is going to be our, our trial our trial piece. This is an old I think, ammunition pack. Uh, I don't really know, again, if you recognize what this pack was used for. Uh, it looks like a, a surplus quality. Please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to uh, uh, kind of give credit to where it's due. So we're going to just uh, start working around the outside in no particular uh, manner here. And just, uh, just paint it on. Right away I can feel the... You can see the the, uh, the wax melt very quickly on the uh, on the surface of the bag. We're going to hit that up with a heat gun afterward, I think, to really allow that that uh, wax to penetrate into the into the uh, into the fabric. Yeah, because it's really standing on this on the top.
don't think I have my ratios quite correct, but uh, nevertheless, this is uh, the first first attempt, and that's why we have this bag as a kind of a sample sample bag to try. Yeah, definitely the wax is kind of lots of lots of wax in this mixture. That's what we wanted. So we're going to finish hitting the outside of this bag. And then uh, I'm going to get my heat gun. And we're going to apply some heat and see if we can really get that to, to soak down into the fibers of the canvas. really hope this works <laughs> but you can see the color is not coming out quite the way I thought it would so I'm not sure all right the bag is coated on the outside we're gonna get the heat gun cranked up and see if that helps uh, allow that mixture to uh, really soak in Okay, so we've got our heat gun, and what we're going to do is just apply heat uh, to the bag and see what happens. Now you can see that really melting away now. I don't know I'm that hot. And it's soaking right into the fibers of the bag, taking with it, I think, some of that color actually. Look at that, just the bag, the canvas is just soaking it right up. That's what we're looking for. Allow that wax to permeate in all the cracks and crevices, the, the stitching. That's what we want. Little, little spot I missed so I can go back with the brush just kind of dab it in there hope you can see that just melting and soaking right into the right into the canvas. You could probably do this with a hair dryer too, I would think.
you can see the wax compound is soaked right into the uh, the canvas uh, right through to both sides so if you're wondering if you have to do both inside and outside of your packs I don't think that's necessary it's certainly the outside that requires protection but know that it does uh, wick its way right into the canvas so now that uh, <clears throat> I'm all done I'm just going to go around the creases make sure everything's worked in add a little bit of extra heat where necessary to melt any of that buildup and then I'm going to go over the whole canvas pack with a bit of a, a brush and uh, work, in, work it into uh, all those areas and make sure I have no, no buildup. This is just a, a kind of a semi, semi hard plastic bristle. It looks, feels like a large toothbrush. Uh, you could probably use a toothbrush for that matter, but I'm just going to work it around and make sure I have, uh, it's all worked right into those fibers, evenly distributed. Uh, you can see it kind of fluff up some of that wax. We're going to give it another another heat, and uh, that'll allow all that extra residue to sink sink back in. There's a little bit extra right there. It'll sink back into the pores of the canvas. This bag is uh, has been done before, I can tell, but it, it's made it very rigid, and uh, and and certainly well, it's going to be waterproof, almost waterproof right now. You can hear it it's almost a very very st stiff and that's what we're looking for so we're going to heat it hit it with a bit of heat and that'll take that uh, kind of a bit of a shine off there and allow that those loose wax build up to re-soak right back into the into the canvas again The heat gun is just great. It applies so much heat very quickly. But probably a hair dryer would do. Not, not, as, not as fast, I would think, but it would do. Actually says Mark mk4 here i think that's uh maybe roman numeral six yeah, 1941 so it's seen some seen some time seen some tours i'm sure well there you go guys this is uh this was our first uh first attempt a little diy uh canvas bag waterproofing it's really giving it that uh, aggressive kind of uh really stiff canvas rugged uh, texture and feeling there's not a not a not too much of a waxy feel to it it's all really absorbed into the material it's heavy it feels heavy uh, much like those tin pants you see uh, these various people promoting uh, on YouTube um, just a ever so slight odor but uh, if you've ever done any woodwork uh, with stain you know that uh, that uh, that smell uh, quickly wears off so that's the, that's my hope that that's what happens with this. But uh, what a great little haversack. It was a great day bag. I, I uh, haven't been using this one uh, near as much. I think I'm going to pull it back into the uh, into the pack fleet, if you will, and uh, get it seeing some outings real soon. With this canvas pack, it has a, uh, like I was showing you, it has this frame. Kind of an external frame however it's attached internally so how you have to get at that frame is inside are the leather buckles and that comes undone and you can see it ties itself in i'm going to leave those in place because i would like to apply a little bit of the waterproofing to all the, the leather uh, up on the top here this is another piece that's uh fastened you can see it's fastened right through the frame into these into these buckles here so these buckles have two functions not only the kind of the quick quick grab strap but also these buckles and they have not been out anytime recently for sure. There we go. But 
a unique way to do that. Here's the grab strap. This gives me a good chance to make sure all the leather webbing is uh, satisfactory. And then that just comes out of that little ring. There you go. So there's your, your frame. Lumbar support. And now when, when I have it apart, I would like to coat all of these with some uh, some wax waterproofing as, as well. Uh, beeswax or any kind of leather, leather conditioners just to extend the life of the leather. Okay, so now that the pack is, you can see watermarks from uh, water damage from before. So that is the uh, big advantage of waterproofing with this compound is that it'll, uh, it'll prevent that and uh, should really extend the life of this bag. So we brought it down on a flat surface and make sure you're protecting the floor if that's a uh, worry to you. This is my garage floor, I'm not, not too worried about. Uh, okay, our mixture is still. Here we go. Want to get all around all the, uh, the oh, rivets for sure. You can use a larger brush too. The, this smaller brush doesn't carry a, a ton of material, but I'm able to manage the, the little bit of space at a time and make sure the, the coating gets to where I need it to be. And I would actually cover right over the leather, all your leather on here. It's going to have that extra layer of protection. It's going to soak into the leather and uh, keep it supple. So I'm just going to try to do a number of the, the panels here the best I can. Let's get all the buckles undone. Sure, it get, gets in all the little little cracks and folds. That's also the benefit of using the smaller brush. Gonna actually give the, the leather a good coat here. So we're gonna work on the outside for sure to start. Get in all these folds. We're trying to get the front covered. And uh, then we'll be in a position to turn the pack over and, uh, and get the back. At this point, you're probably second guessing yourself, looking at it. You're like, what are you doing? You're wondering if it's, if it's hurting the pack in any way or, or <clears throat> causing... Cer certainly right now, it doesn't look very very good but I think this is going to uh, like I said ex extend the life of the pack and uh, increase its durability for sure so make sure you get in all the all the seams around all your buckles I'm really excited to see what the finished product's going to be. Now avoid to avoid drips if you move it right close to your your container that uh, that'll avoid on you the, the splash over and drips on your floor it'll only drip right back on your pack. This is going to provide lots of waterproofing for all the stitching provide some kind of uh, abrasion resistance some of you live in different parts of the countries where you're you're exposed to various different thorny, pricky bushes and whatever. And some of you are susceptible to a lot of. I guess all of us are susceptible to environments where it's very wet, various seasons. Okay, that's the uh, that's the front. Um, 
I think I can probably attack the bottom arm here. I'm also just watching how much mixture I have left. I think I should have enough to finish this pack and that'll be about it. But I can uh, always reheat this liquid uh, and uh, it'll be ready for another, another job, another batch. Right onto the back where it meets the leather. Okay, now let's do let's do the front flap here over here. Now these straps are going to soak this right up. That's often what breaks loose in these packs. If it's not the stitching, it's it's the leather. Usually the canvas is pretty durable. So. Okay. Lots of extra wax there. I think maybe while we're here, just keep, keep going. And then way I want to have the heat gun out, I can just keep going right around the bag. And as I said, if any of you recognize the, the make and model of this bag, please tell me in the uh, comments below. I welcome any, uh, any information. And uh, welcoming of any of that stuff. Any information you have to share about th things or, or questions that you may have about what I'm doing either in this video or any other videos, please send me a comment. I, I promise you I'll get back to you for sure. I'm going to get her get right back in here too, underneath the flap. Get her stitched in. Again, we're playing it pretty liberally. Try to get this edge here. Okay. And any of the extra residue on the floor, we can uh, we can always can I take a putty knife and, and, and scrape that off the, uh, off the floor. You have various settings on your uh, on your heat gun. Just be careful. Uh, obviously, the the hot setting works faster, but you can also burn and damage some of the stitching. So you can see the lighter areas didn't receive as much. Uh, coating on the first brushing so it might take a repeated coating to really level out some of these lighter color, colored blemishes here.
One technique that is working well is that um, if I'm hands free, I'm going to use the heat in one hand and the brush in the other, and I'm going to brush out uh, any buildup so it's uh, a little more even. So just as it melts off, I'm just going to feather it out into other areas and kind of even out that, that build up. And it just evens out the protection around that area. Just like that. I don't think I have quite enough mixture made up to do a whole second coat, but I am going to do a double coat on the the uh, top pouch. This is the surface that would get the bulk of the uh, rain or moisture anyway, so... And I've just grown to, to learn how to work in a circular motion, heating it up, letting it soak in. And you can almost see it just soaking right into the material. You might be able to see that on the camera, I'm not sure. And the overdrip, just re-wet it down, it'll soak in. You wipe off any excess, just be careful you don't burn yourself. You can see it's starting to soak through the backside now, which is what I wanted. It would be a full penetration. Full soaking. Just before assembly, I am just going to uh, give these, these rather dry leather straps uh, uh, kind of a liberal coating as well. The, just assembled the pack and now just giving it a final once over with the uh, the heat gun just to melt off any any extra residue that's uh, <clears throat> kind of come up in the uh, in the reassembly I will say the straps soaked it right up uh, very very happy with that I'll show you here right on the leather And it just rehydrates all that that leather with uh, the the wax, the essential oils from the, the linseed oil, and just brings everything right up. All the all the leather just feels all subtle. Um, and uh, nice and soft. So you can see there's a dry strap right there. And you can see where it started to crack. This one will have to be replaced.
but for now I'll put the uh, put the wax to it and let it soak soak right in and uh, who knows maybe that'll be all that's required for the uh, extending the life of this strap in, in the pack Just massage in, wipe off the excess. It'll soak in somewhere. Any drips down below. Just melt those as well. What I do just once over the pack, hit any extra spots that the, uh, the, the uh, wax didn't sink in. And it'll talk, probably take a little bit of use before this wax kind of weathers and, and uh, sinks in, levels out. I tell you, the pack is uh, now that much more waterproof and uh, ready for the field for sure. You can see from the start our pack was uh, very similar to this uh, kind of dry, uh, dry canvas, uh, non-waterproof canvas and now you can see the uh, this is only uh, about a one coat on uh, our canvas bag that was very similar to this one. In terms of color it's darkened right up it feels that much more rugged and uh, scratch resistant and uh, obviously waterproof very happy with that and it's also given given new life to our buckles look how, uh, how smooth they look a little bit of wax still on there I'll hit that with the heat gun and level it out that's ready for the trail anyways Jeff Allen off the gridiron Appreciate your time watching the video. If you haven't done so already, please click like down below, the bell notification to be notified of any videos, and check out one of my other videos up top. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll definitely get back to you with any comments you leave below. Take care. Enjoy your outdoors. Bye for now.